Today we're going to be disassembling, assembling, and reviewing the Charles Daly shotgun. I'll be using this vise to free up my hands while working on the fire and this scribe as well to point out different parts. Here's all the tools you'll need to disassemble the firearm. Alright now that we've got a clear firearm let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is unscrew the magazine cap. Feel free to pause this video at any time. Now go ahead and remove the fore end grip. Alright, with the fore end grip off, go ahead and remove the barrel. You may have to wiggle it a few times back and forth. Now go ahead and remove the piston as well as the action retarder. Remove the operating handle. It can only be removed when aligned in the middle of the bolt. Slide the action bar sleeve forward. In doing so, the action bar and bolt will come with it. Remove the bolt and then the action bar. The sleeve and spring will come next. Now we're going to be removing the front and rear trigger guard pins. Remove the trigger guard assembly. Now we're moving on to the recoil pad. Remove the recoil pad screws. Be sure to use the correct bit while working on a firearm. There are specific bits to unscrew a recoil pad. Being that this is an adjustable recoil pad, there will be multiple steps of disassembling this specific one. Follow the steps in the video and you'll be just fine. This shotgun requires an allen head screw to unscrew the buttstock from the receiver. Next we're going to be disassembling the trigger guard assembly. Start by releasing the hammer. Next we're going to be removing the carrier. Remove the trigger plate bushing out of the side. When removing the carrier, be careful from the carrier dog spring and follower. It will be under spring tension. Now remove the carrier dog follower and spring. Next we're going to be pulling the hammer all the way back. Use your free hand to put pressure on the hammer, plunger, and spring, and then remove the two. Now we're going to be using a punch to push out the hammer pin. Remove the punch and then the hammer. Remove the second trigger plate pin bushing.
Be cautious while removing the punch. Put some pressure on the trigger spring. Always trying to remember which way the spring sits inside the trigger guard. Next we'll be using a punch to drive out the trigger pin. Remove the punch and then pull the trigger upward. Now we're going to be removing the trigger sear. Be cautious, it will be under spring tension. Once removed, remove the trigger sear detent and spring. Next we're going to be disassembling the bolt. First step is going to be to remove the extractor pin. Make sure you have somewhere to drive out the pin. Once the pin has been driven out, go ahead and remove the extractor. Behind the extractor will be the extractor plunger and spring. Be very careful not to lose any of these parts while disassembling the firearm. Or mix them up for that matter. Alright, next is going to be the firing pin retaining pin. It will be under spring tension, but not that much. Alright, go ahead and remove the firing pin and spring. And now the lock and block. Alright guys, you just completed the disassembly. Next we're going to get into the assembly and then the review. Alright, first step in the assembly, we're going to put this bolt back together. Let's start with the lock and block. I recommend putting the firing pin spring back on the firing pin and then assembling it in the bolt. Now replace the firing pin retaining pin back in the bolt. You can get it started with the hammer. Once it's started, you're going to want to put pressure on the firing pin itself and then drive it in the rest of the way. Next we'll be installing the extractor. First the extractor spring, then the extractor plunger, and then the extractor. Now drive the extractor pin back in the bolt body. Now to install the trigger, we're going to start with the trigger spring, and then the trigger pin, and then the trigger sear. Compress the trigger spring while placing the trigger sear back in place. Install the trigger back in the trigger plate and then drive the trigger pin back into the side of the trigger plate. Next up is going to be the hammer. Once the hammer hole is aligned, place the hammer pin back into the trigger plate. Place the hammer spring and plunger back in the trigger plate. Compress the hammer plunger while rotating the hammer. Place the carrier dog follower and spring back in the trigger plate. Compress the hammer until engaged. Next we're going to be installing the carrier. Compress the carrier dog follower while installing. Once the carrier is aligned, punch the trigger plate bushing back into the side of the trigger plate. Next we're going to be installing the trigger spring. Start by pushing in the second trigger plate bushing. Compress the spring while sliding the trigger plate bushing. Now we're going to be installing the trigger plate back into the receiver.
Now install the front and rear trigger plate pins. Next we're going to be installing the stock. Start by placing the stock screw through the stock hole and ready to go in the receiver. One good ratchet at the end will do. You don't want to go too tight and crack the stock. Now we're going to be installing the adjustable recoil pad. I sped up the time here so we can get through this video as quickly as possible. Be sure to adjust it how you see fit. All right, let's go ahead and install the action spring and then the action sleeve, followed by the action bar. Next, the action retarder. Then place the bolt back on the action bar. Once everything's assembled, go ahead and slide it back into the receiver. Place the bolt handle back in the bolt body. Make sure it's aligned in the center of the bolt body. Alright, with the action rack back, we're going to go ahead and place the barrel back on the shotgun. Then the fore end. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and place the magazine cap back on the shotgun. Alright, we got a properly working action. We're going to go ahead and jump straight into the review, guys. Alright guys, we're all done disassembling and assembling this firearm. We're going to go ahead and jump into this review. I gotta say, I'm a big fan. This particular firearm is pretty easy to disassemble and assemble. But on top of all that, it's a, it's a really sharp looking gun. I really like it a lot. You can purchase these at a pretty fair price. They don't manufacture these firearms anymore, but it's still a really good gun. Just a little tough getting parts for. Between the adjustable recoil pad and the raised cheek rest, this is the ultimate skeet shotgun. And a pretty damn good looking one at that. It has a really nice wood stock. And it's been well fit to the firearm. The forend is a really nice grip with checkering as well. The checkering is comfortable but could be better. Whoever started checkering never finished. The diamond should be coming to a sharp tip and not a flat top. Same things going on with the forend, but it is a really nice pattern and it does make the gun stand out. As you already know, the stock has an adjustable recoil pad, which is awesome and great for skeet shooting. We've got a show catcher on the receiver, which is really nice, especially if you're going to be putting some birdshot down range. The safety is in a really nice spot on the firearm, and it's easy to engage and disengage. The action on this Charles Daly is really nice and smooth. I know this shotgun's had several thousand rounds through it. The choke on this firearm is easy to detach and it doesn't require any hand tools at all. As you can see the end of the barrel has ported holes which helps with the reduction of muzzle climb 
and recoil. Alright YouTubers, that about sums up my review. And if you like this video, please like or subscribe down below. Or leave a comment in the comment section. This is my first YouTube channel, and I'll be trying to get out more videos just like this one every week. I'll see you next time at the Amateur Smith.